Welcome to the Low Carb USA podcast, where we seek to inspire you to help us build this community. I'm Doug Reynolds. And this is Pam Devine. Hi, everybody. We're so happy to have Dr. Hasina Kaji with us today. Um, she's coming to us all the way from South Africa on the other side of the world. Um, we had such a lovely time having her come and speak at the conference this past summer and getting to know her. She's such a lovely person, kind-hearted, caring, and has made such a commitment to bringing um, really empowering healthcare to her community and doing research and teaching and training those principles around the world. So she is a um, practicing physician still, not in the traditional um, hospital setting that she used to be in with the um, nine to five and the rushing around and all the things. She's kind of toned it down a little bit to um, bring some peace in her life, but also to have some more time to teach others and do research in her community and bring that to the world. So Hasina, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me and for waking up early so that we could make uh, the time difference uh, count. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure and thank you for that wonderful introduction. It was really lovely to meet you both formally in San Diego last year. And thank you for all that you do for the, for the low carb community and the world. It's been such a pleasure. And um, so Dr. Hasina, um, Tell us how you went from, you know, practicing to learning low carb for yourself and for your patients and then how you met Prof Noakes and got involved with the Noakes Foundation and then that turned into maybe, or maybe it was around the same time, I'm not sure of the timing, your efforts and becoming the medical director of the Nutrition Network and getting all of that educational pieces, all of those educational pieces put into place to teach others. So, um, you know, I became a doctor. I think most doctors do it for the heart um, of wanting to help people make the world a better place. And I was uh, all bright eyed and bushy tailed. Um, I specialized in internal medicine. And then when I, my daughter was 18 months old, I was offered my dream job of um, running a high care unit at that was attached to the emergency unit. So. I started to specialize in emergency medicine, but then my heart led me to internal medicine. So there was always a little bit of both, uh, a love for both in me. So when I was offered this job to work as a specialist physician running an emergency high care unit, it seemed like the best thing. And it was the best thing, but it was the worst thing because I, it, it was a concentration of really sick people coming to the Cape from the Cape Metropole into this 10 bed high care unit. So it was the next, the next level would be ICU. So we housed the patients. We had a lot of ICU level patients, um, intubated, ventilated on, um, life support, uh, you know, to maintain their cardiac output and their blood pressure and all of the rest. Um, and it was the most demotivating time at the time because at the same time I was doing the mortality stats and I became so intrigued because the numbers, the proportion of people who were dying in under the age of 65 was higher than the proportion of people who were dying who were in the older age group. And I would do the stats month after month and I saw the same pattern emerging. So I would sit through, sit through the stats and figure out What's killing the young people? You know, you're still young. You're at your, you're supposed to be at your most vital. And why are you dying? And it turned out that the highest numbers were coming from chronic diseases. And I saw the same thing reflected in the high care unit. At one stage, 10 beds were pulled with cardiac patients. Most of the cases would have been under the age of 65. And what was worse was that these people were coming in you know, you say cardiac disease, but when you, when you experience cardiac disease from the setting of a physician, from um, having the patient have his echo done and seeing that his ejection fraction, which is the, 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 
uh, contractile capacity of your heart is down to 8%, which means you don't have a job anymore. You are now reliant on your pension um, or you die. Um, and if, and I'm, I'm filling in the death certificates and I'm breaking this news to young mothers, I mean, young wives, mothers, young children. And what was worse was that the children were coming in, carrying in packets of crisps and cool drinks. And it just, it was just too much. And as much as so I started a low carb clinic, I was, I even had high hopes of starting a research project with the respiratory obstructive sleep apnea group. And it became too much to run at full capacity in the clinic and in high care unit. And then I realized as I saw results in the clinic that this, this is what I want to do because this is actually real medicine. This is helping people. And it's not happening in somebody else's lifetime. It's happening in my lifetime. Really quickly, I'm seeing results. And so at the time, this banting diet had exploded the term and it was prof was getting a lot of flack for it um and it was seen as the rich man's diet and you know i reached out to prof and said you know we, what's being done in the poorer communities at the same time there were other people like jane bullen who was thinking the same thoughts and eodia sampson who's a local actress um in a south african drama and we all with the three of us were introduced to each other and Yodia was running uh, groups in Ocean View. And we decided we need to put this lifestyle into practice in a poorer socioeconomic group. And so that's literally how Eat Better South Africa was founded. The three of us sitting around a table discussing this group of 40 women who were meeting three, three times a week to exercise and were just gaining weight. And were desperate. Eodia had been on a low carbohydrate diet. She had lost a lot of weight. People said, what are you doing? She had reached out to Prof to say, how, this is how, what I'm doing. And so we were put together and we landed in this community. And it was the most, I actually stood there, gobsmacked. And I looked at this group in front of me and I just cried. And I was, I was so, it was heartbreaking, but it was so empowering because for me as a practitioner, for all those years, I was sitting behind the desk saying, you need to do this and you need to do that and you can't eat this and this is going to kill you and you need to make the same changes in your children. And now the, for the first time, those patients were facing me, overweight, but they were saying, we want we want a better life. Please teach us how. And it was in that moment of hope and it, it, I could see the tide turning. And it was that that was so empowering. And we had um, amazing, dramatic results that we now know is the norm. You know, the 10, 11 kilos of weight loss, the blood pressure dropping in the first two weeks. We've just run our 13th intervention now. Um, so the first intervention was I was actually on maternity leave, which was why I had a break and was able to be involved in this project. And now my son's five. So that was just almost five years ago that we, uh, we had the first intervention. We went back to the same community. And there were people from the first intervention who were still on the lifestyle, had still maintained their weight. The only reason they came to the intervention was to see how they could be of assistance. So what happened as we went on with these, um, in, in the course um, of working at Rudis Care, and I was advising when I went back to work full time, I couldn't be as involved as I wanted to be. And I would just advise, uh, you know, where I, wherever I could. And then I was invited to be a director on the board of the Noakes Foundation. Um, and then soon after that, I was invited to be the medical director of Eat Better South Africa. I was still working at, at um, my full-time job at the time. And, you know, it developed that I, uh, you have to kind of burn one level to, you know, kind of like a, a, a um, cutting away at what's pulling your energy in mm. order to direct your energy uh, into what you want to do. And th the, the thing with Eat Better South Africa was we tried to get funding 
and we applied for lots of different uh, different arenas. We you know we applied for funding and sponsorships, and it's not an area that is very popular for funding. So we then decided to to uh, create the nutrition network. One because I realized on my journey of gaining knowledge in this sphere that I had so many different books that I was reading and following so many different Facebook pages and Twitter accounts. And I felt so completely alone, except for my, for my association with Prof and Neville and Jane, you know, so us, our, our core team. Before that, I felt incredibly alone. And I knew that there were lots of colleagues around they would mail me or they'd phone me and it was all hush hush nobody was willing to speak up initially especially while Prof's trial was going on i'd have people mail me from canada colleagues that had moved there I, i'd previously worked in ireland i'd have people mail me from there to say what are you doing in east africa and we need more help on this side of the world and i realized there were lots of people looking for knowledge from all over the world and so the re one of the reasons the nutrition network was created was to use to create a network mm. to join all the people trying to access that knowledge and link them with the people who had the knowledge and to give a platform to all the different voices so that we could have one kind of uniform kind of a curated um, um, body of knowledge. And obviously the main reason was to create a funding stream for Eat Better South Africa, uh, because the majority of the profits of the nutrition network go straight into running our programs. So now we have, um, we've been able to add to our staff, we've been able to um, pay Eat Better South Africa. The nutrition network is now uh, Eat Better South Africa's biggest affiliate. Um, and we've been able to consistently pay um, EPL South Africa in order to run these programs that are fully catered, the blood work, um, the measurements, the staff that come week after week for the intensive six-week program, um, the machinery, the equipment that's needed um, for these programs, the, um, the meals you know we, we've got sponsors that sponsor some of the heba puff and things like that uh, banking boulevard and new me and some of our other affiliates um but it costs money and now thanks to uh, you guys and the the great work that you're doing to promote the nutrition network and the network that you've created um, and the global support of all the doctors on the platform we're able to do this work and I have to tell you this amazing story. We had, um, and we'll share, I don't know if we've shared our Eat Better South Africa video with you from the last intervention, but we had a lady who um, was over 100, I think she was 110 kilos or something like that. And all she wanted was to be under 100 kilos. And she told us um, at the end okay, of just, the Just to stop there for a second, um, since this is in the US. So 110 okay. kilos is about 240 pounds or something like that, okay. right? Just so that they so understand. About, so she wanted to be under 100 kilos. So that's about 200. 220, yeah. Yeah. So that was her goal. And within that five weeks, she, um, you know, she spoke to us and she said, you know, I, I can't remember offhand how much weight she'd lost, probably about eight kilos. It's like 16, 20 pounds or something like that but she said i've never walked on the beach now ocean view is abutting the beach it's it's a fishing village mm -hmm. she said she just couldn't she said it's the first time in my life that i've been able to walk on the beach and now a couple of months i think it's about three or four months since the intervention she's 87 kilos wow. so if you could translate that into pounds 87 100 and so yeah it's about 180 we, pounds, about 180 pounds, close we're enough. We're talking yeah. about a postmenopausal woman um, in her 60s. She had arthritis. Uh, we've got people who couldn't move. She called herself a couch potato, like people who were stiff and sore, not able to move off their beds, thinking that these are the last of their days. And 
there, there, there was one particular woman who basically shimmied down to her, uh, uh, to, did a squat in front of the whole group and stood up in high heels. She said, when I started, I couldn't move. Look at me now. This is what we're getting back. We've got people, there was a lady I, I speak to the, I give the medical talk in like the second or third week. And for this particular group, I uh, was the doctor who looked after them. We had quite a few sick people in this particular intervention with abnormal liver function tests and things like that. And there was one particular lady who fell asleep. You know, she couldn't help it. She had obstructive sleep apnea, undiagnosed. She fell asleep. I can't tell you how many times in that one hour lecture. And I saw her about two or three weeks later in my rooms. Firstly, she didn't fall asleep at all. It's a group consult. So there's like a whole lot of ladies. I wasn't talking to her for quite a period of time. She had ample opportunity to fall asleep. She was completely wide awake. She says, I don't, I, when I go to work, there's a flight of stairs that I normally have to stand for quite a while and catch my breath. She says, the other day I was like running up the stairs and this lady stopped me and said to me, I watch you all the time and you always stop at that particular set of stairs and now you're running. What are you doing? Where are you getting all this energy from? But the most um, fascinating thing about her Remember, it's the first time that we had met her three weeks ago, and she had this voice that sounded almost like a, like a very hoarse, like a strangulated voice. Mm -hmm. It was a totally different person speaking to me three weeks later. She had a normal voice. When I, after the ladies left, I phone, phoned Yana just to go. I, I needed to share this joy, and I said, Yana... Um, Yana runs, I mean, you know Yana, but Yana runs the interventions um, at Eat Better South Africa. So I phoned Yana to say, almost in tears, I'm like, this is what happened. And um, she never fell asleep and she's lost so much weight and so many centimeters and her, her um, arthritis is gone. And Yana said, Hasina, did you notice her voice? I said, I don't even know that that, that, she said, because Yana sees them every week. She said, I thought there was something different about her and said her voice is, is sounding different. She said, I, I, I thought there was something wrong with her voice and, you know, she didn't know what to make of it. It's, you know, the non-scale victories. We all, people are all focused on these, on the weight and the centimeters, but the non-scale victories are immense. When people are able to get a job back, um, when people are able to fit into a wetsuit so that they can be employable, um, when they can now provide for their family. All of these things, for, for us, this is the reason why we do what we do. Those are the real uh, victories. And so how this has gone on is that this particular group of women, um, us, the, the, the primary health care facility that they um, feed into uh, doesn't have any low carbohydrate trained practitioners, doctors, nurses, or anything like that. So we've had quite a successful meeting last week with the local hospital. And uh, the head of the hospital there is already on a low carbohydrate diet herself and, and has read all the books and understands the science and uh, the debunking of the myths. And so we're now looking at running a starting, you have to start by training staff, I think, because there's no point training training your doctors, you have to start by doing this intervention for staff members. So we're looking at running um, a series of staff interventions in a few local hospitals. Um, and we're hoping, to, we're hoping to research that and publish that and um, turn that around. You know, I, I did a couple of interventions at Hurtiscare Hospital with the nurses in the emergency uh, department. And they're, they're, it's, it's such a life-changing thing to do over a short period of time for a group of people who work so hard and put so much of so much of their life is in the hospital or you know with the patient um, at the patient's bedside. So it's really worthwhile to spend some time educating staff. I don't know what the staff is like on that side of the world, but our beat um, there was a local study done at Medunso Hospital where they 
compared obesity stats um, of the staff, and it was higher than the the national average. Um, worse than that was that half of the staff had no idea that their um, their obesity was a problem, and were making no efforts to change anything mm. and a third of them already had a chronic diseases associated with obesity so it's something that i've been very passionate about looking after the staff um, empowering the staff with education but also coming from the angle that people are seen mm. um, you're in a care for, uh, career you know you're in a healing kind of environment and Often the doctors are, and, the, and the nurses are the most neglected and are the worst people to, we're not teaching anybody on how, how to take care of ourselves, not just by eating, but the kind of lives that we live, that we don't prioritize um, our sleep, we don't prioritize our uh, um, break times, um, we feel guilty even taking a toilet break, um, you know, so... I think trying to get that area empowered with education with a little bit of um, I see you, I see that you're a mom who arrives at work at five or whatever before six o'clock in the morning, and so you're working a twelve hour shift, so of course, where is the time to prepare your meals? Mm -hmm. so how can we work towards a healthier life because you've put so much of your life into this career but you have a chronic disease, which means that you're unlikely to live, to enjoy that retirement that you think you're working towards. Yeah. It's, it's a difficult conversation to have, but people, it's like the, a head in, um, in the sand, you know, people, I, I think a lot of people just don't know. Um, for us in South Africa, there's the culture of, uh, um, the closer people have this culture where, um, the the bigger you are, the more affluent, the the more well looked after you are. Yeah. So if you're losing weight, what's wrong with you? Have you got AIDS? Are you HIV positive? I've had a lot of the nurses say, people are horrible to me. They're nasty to me. They say, oh, look at your head. Your head's looking bigger. Sure, you must stop losing weight. You you look a bit funny now. Uh, you must look like a makoti. You know, makoti is somebody's wife. Um. And there's those kinds of stigmas to overcome as well. Wow. Thankfully, the people are saying, I don't care. I'm healthy. I don't care what you say about me. And you know, they just keep going. That's a huge step forward. I'd just like to go back quickly to the, the nutrition network thing, because apart from um, creating this network and bringing you know, everybody together, I mean, what you've really done is, is provide these incredible training courses for physicians and now you've added ones for um dietitians even for nurses and even now um i'm i've been i've been encouraging you guys to do it forever um but now I've provided one for health coaches and keto coaches okay. and you know when you first started doing this when you had the one just for physicians and i had in our community i had all these people saying we want to do it we want to do it and Jane was just saying, no, it's only for physicians. And, right. and, but my, my point was that there are so many people that, that are so excited about what happens to them when they, their lives change when they, when they do this, that now they want to teach everybody else. We all do that. Right. That's why we've got Low Carb USA. And, right. and yeah, so, so now when these people um, actually want to start doing this, they're going to start their keto coaching program right Absolutely. or their, their low carb program but you don't know where they've got the information from and what they've, they've they've picked it up uh from the internet or whatever and so i was saying it's so important to to provide some form of training for those people so that we know that okay they're going to go off and teach other people at least they're going armed with with the right information um and so we were thinking about creating training programs, online training programs. And then you guys, Jane Bullen, who's the, the head of the nutrition um, of the Noakes Foundation, right? And she's also now involved with the nutrition network. 
And she came to me and said, we, we provide, we're building these courses, don't you want to uh, help us um, promote them? And it was like, it was like a godsend to me because right. I, I was, I was feeling weak at the knees at the, yeah. at the thought of how much work was going to be involved in creating these courses. I had a lot of content from all our events. Um, and so this, this was like, I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is say here, yeah. and I've got such faith in Prof and, and the Nokes Foundation and the Nutrition Network in terms of the, the, the quality that I know of the information that they're going to be teaching that I now am able to certify those practitioners and health coaches and whatever on our, on, in, on our website um, to say that they're certified now because they've done that course. So, you know, now people can go to our website and click on the training and, and go and choose whichever course is appropriate for them and, and get certified. And, and then we know at least the doctors and the keto coaches are all equipped with with the correct Definitely. information and the correct knowledge. So I just yes, wanted yes. to make sure that people listening to this know about that. Because I mean, that's a bit of, that, when you talk about revenue streams, that's where your revenues come from. Is Absolutely. From those, from those courses. So, so the interesting people. thing was that we were, we wanted to create a safe place for medical professionals and we wanted to keep the conversation very high level. Bearing in mind that people like Jane Bullen, who's very highly educated, isn't a medical professional, but can still have that level of, and yourselves. So, but what we wanted was to um, invite, we wanted to start at a basic level of knowledge so that people starting for the first time didn't have to crawl YouTube, could come to our lectures and do a course and then keep building those advanced courses. So what would happen was would be that we would we actually got loads of requests uh, coming through because we had to go through all the criteria in the gray areas. Uh, we, you know, people weren't sure about whether these people should be um, allowed in or not, and we had a whole lot of people saying, um, "Aren't you doing one for non-medical people?" So much so that after we had released the doctors, the first professional training, then the nurses training. And we were in the middle of the advanced training that we decided, you know what, we need to look at this and seriously do something about it. But it was even more daunting than the medical courses because you're taking responsibility for non-medical people. And so we had to, we were, it took a lot of time and we had to do a lot of screening and find the right person and the right people to give the coach talks because it's a very sacred space um, when you're holding somebody's hand through a an obesity journey or chronic disease journey it takes a lot of training as a doctor to get there or as a nurse or any of the medical professionals get a lot of training on how to deal with patients and we had to make sure that we were giving people the tools to do this in a respectful and a safe manner and who um, when to refer you know when in doubt what are the areas and scenarios where you needed to refer to another professional so we took a lot of time it was the most daunting um, course to release but we found that it's actually a godsend to us as well because in this environment the medical environment that we find ourselves in with um, so many doctors, or, or not that many doctors who are equipped with this knowledge, you do need a go-between to do the stuff that you don't necessarily need to do as a doctor, like running the group um, you know, um, meetings and giving all the advice. And you do need to know when to refer and you know, how to, when you know, the doctor's involved in the, medical issues and the deep prescribing and which scenarios you're not equipped to deal with as a coach. So we, you know, um, and so much so that there's one of our uh, uh, trainees from Australia who is uh, launching the world's first online all women, all women conference um, in April. I think it's in April this year. Uh, her name is Tracy McBeef, and we've got a few people 
um, launching different facilities around the world. So it's just, it's, it's the, it was the right thing to do. And of course, it was going to be the arena that exploded because it was the public that won the war. Um, you know, it, it is the public that drives this. The doctors are kind of coming to it. Like even Eric Westman, his patient, put him on the path and, you know, that kind of thing. So we're incredibly grateful to you guys for all of the um, work that you do and the promotion and all of the um, students that come through your website. Um, and this is, I mean, it's such an important thing to keep um, talking, you know, keto carnivore is now the thing to do. And people have so many questions. Um, it's, it's knowledge, is, it's, it's never ending. And it's just nice to be able to have that space um, and the private um, Facebook group where so much learning happens, so many conversations happening all the time. I don't know how often you guys are on there, but it's fascinating how clever the, pe the people are um, on the platform. Yeah, no, it's been incredible. And, you know, and like you said, it's, it's, it's just amazing or so important that, um, that people are, are, are equipped, is a good word to use, are equipped with the right and the proper and correct information so that they, you know, it's, it's a responsibility when you teach other people. And uh, you need to make sure that, uh, that they know the right stuff. And, and continue uh, learning. Yeah. There's always, um, there's more research coming out, there's more information coming out, there's a bigger, you know, focus here, focus there. And, you know, one of the wonderful things that I heard feedback was, was even the physicians, the nurses, the dietitians got so much out of the advisor course because it did talk about the support, the supporting of the person, the individual and knowing when to um, do this or that or be, um, how to be empathetic or to um, consider the different characteristics and um, it was really yeah. helpful across the board. That's, that's true. I forget about that. It was like the, it was, even the doctors and, and some of the nurse practitioners, PAs, all of those people are actually going and doing the advisor course as well. Because, right. because yeah. you know, in the physician's course and that, it, it talks about the science, but it still doesn't talk about how to get across to your patient. Right. And that's you know, the, that's it's the a, it's wonderful a different part. Skill. It's a skill, right? right? And, um, and so they, as Pam said, they're getting so much out of that in learning how to, how to actually talk to, and teach people as opposed to, yes, okay, now I understand the science, but here's another piece that teaches me how to actually get that information across, which is so which important. Is cool. We've got another uh, fantastic series of uh, lectures coming through a module on ethics. Oh, and yeah. this is fantastic it's for any doctor whether you practice lchf or not um, it's um, advocate joan adams who chaired prof Noakes's trial and she has come up with a, uh, some, some beautiful videos teaching doctors just going through global um, even though she's south african she's made it very global um, so that it can appeal to uh, or apply to wherever you're practicing medicine um, just your uh, rights as a practitioner, um, how to practice safe medicine, um, a, a wonderful series of lectures that I, I just feel so much more empowered and comfortable uh, practicing as a doctor when you do it the right way. Mm -hmm. Often we have these um, ethics meetings just for points and we do cover the ethical issues. In this particular arena, I think ethics are very important is um, practicing uh, medicine remotely, uh, you know, Skype consults, that kind of thing. She goes through that as well. So that is something that's really um, helpful. We've also got a couple of freebies that we've made available to um, the existing people on the network, uh, which are basically doctors uh, from the doctor's desk. So a Neville's series, um, you know, managing diabetes that's been released and well received i do a series on history taking and non-scale victories um, and then we've got some advanced topics coming up so uh, cardiology um oh, i can't remember you know, gastroenterology neurology 
Yeah, so we've got some advanced topics. That's part of our long-term certification process that we are still working on, kind of testing knowledge so that you can um, see how much, you know, and, and the mentorship and things like that to see how much um, the person who's done the course has actually gained from that. But it's this is the type of medicine that makes me smile and makes me feel like everything's worthwhile. The thing that you can do that you can talk on forever and ever and ever and never feel tired. Um, so thank you both for the endless hours that you put into this with all your heart and soul and your passion. And it shines through in every event, in every post that you make in in every single event that you have, it shines through. And I know it has must it must not have been an easy journey. It's still um, not an easy journey. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like you said, it's 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 so worth it. It's like every day we hear and Story. learn about people that we've been able to influence or inspire. Um, Someone either, came on Saturday at our community meeting and wanted to talk to Doug so badly and he had a bag of avocados. He says, I picked these oh. from the tree in my yard. Thank you for changing my life. Oh, and wow. It's Great. like, what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> we, do work, we work really hard. We take a lot of risk. We actually make a lot more sacrifice than I think people realize um, because funding, we just, we don't have funding. It's just the two of us. And um, we're just so grateful for the community who wants to learn. We're grateful for our global partnerships with you who inspire us every day, um, who, you know, a little bit of the nutrition network things. And when we are able to get that learning into the hands of others, it also comes back to us and our programs a little bit. And um, it goes to support everybody in this whole endeavor of helping more people get out of the cycle of chronic illness. We're not we're not suffering from communicable diseases anymore. We've done a really fabulous job with that, with antibiotics and critical acute care, but chronic illnesses are just out of control. And if we can help physicians do a better job, appreciate their jobs and get the fulfillment that they went into their jobs right. for to get that fulfillment um, and helping others and just, um, continue to make a better continue to make a better impact on global health and public health our communities would you say how does prof say it one meal at a time and i love one your new i love the new tagline one practitioner at a time absolutely yeah okay well thanks so much for being with us Thank hopefully you. see you guys again soon okay hopefully all the best have a lovely day guys all right Bye. Bye. You've been listening to an episode of the Low Carb USA podcast. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash lowcarbusa.